so um, I, I hope most of you know what Erlang is, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but what is Draken? Uh, Draken is a visual language for algorithms. It, it is similar to flowcharts, but it is different. How exactly is it special? First, it is heavily optimized for easy understanding. Second, it has unique features not found elsewhere in other visual languages. Let me elaborate. What do I mean by optimized? Uh, the original idea of this language uh, belongs to a famous Dutch uh, scientist named uh, Ed Edsger Dijkstra. Uh, but the final loop of this language was uh, produced within the Russian space program. A lot of effort has been invested into uh, this language and its rules were polished in uh, focus groups. So it's not something that I just invented yesterday night and showing. No. Uh, Draken um, contains many rules and they together try to ensure that a diagram is easy to read. Such rules, uh, for example, uh, no line intersections. So uh, the, the takeaway from this uh, uh, talk is please never ever do line intersections if you draw any kind of diagram. It is, why? Because when lines intersect uh, on a diagram, then our brain starts thinking do these lines actually touch? Or maybe one goes on, on top of, of another? Or this is something that Draken pays special attention to. We should not make the reader of the diagram think. The reader must concentrate on the task uh, they are solving. Another thing is that uh, only straight lines are allowed. No curved lines. Only strictly vertical. What's vertical? Yeah, that's vertical. And horizontal lines <laughs> are allowed. Only right angles. Uh, th there is, a, there is a, an explanation of this uh, elsewhere, but we don't have time uh, for this now. The general strategy is to reduce visual noise. Visual noise is complexity that is present on a visual scene, but does not convey any useful information. What about the uniqueness? Draken has uh, several unique features. For example, right is bad. Um, the rule of common fate, silhouette, and uh, many others, some of which we will uh, uh, see, uh, see today. So, Erlang is, uh, is awesome, and Draken is amazing. And I thought maybe I could put these two guys together and see what comes out. So I wrote uh, a plugin for Draken Editor that generates source code from Draken diagrams. And uh, we, are, we are going to see what ca came out of this. Uh, actually, no, we are, we are not. Uh, because uh, a Dutch Erlanger named uh, Maas uh, Martin Zeman contacted me and he explained it to me that um, you're doing it wrong. So he wrote a better plugin, which I'm using. Uh, so, um, it's, a, it's a simple game. We have a Draken file. And Draken editor produces a Erlang file out of this. Uh, this Erl. And 
what happens after that is up to you. We can use RLC or we can use rebar or which, whichever way we want uh, to build the project. So we don't need to, uh, to write the whole project in Dracon Erlang, just the interesting parts, the complex parts. So let's, uh, let's take a look at Hello World. Okay. Demo ghost. That's a hello world in Dracon. We have several parts here. First, the header. The header contains the name of the diagram. It's at the top. Then we have the end icon. Every Dracon diagram has one and exactly one end. That's, that's, that's the rule. No matter what happens inside, you end up at the same place. And we have the body of the diagram. Here is only one icon in the body. It's a, it is called action. Action contains mm, a command to execute. In our case, uh, some Erlang code that we will run. Uh, we can uh, try to run this uh, beautiful function. But it's not working because it is a private function. We need to export this function to make it uh, visible f from outside the module. So. Um, here's how it works. We have one Draken file, and inside this Draken file, we have several diagrams. Each diagram becomes a function. Some of these function functions we can export. Here's how. We add this parameters icon to the right from the header, and the first line is public. Yeah. And the rest of the parameters icon is the list of arguments to this function. One argument per line. Let's try running this, uh, this one. Cool, it works. <laughs> if, we, if we look at this source code, we will see that this tool generated an export statement that contains the signature of this hello slash to function. So far, so good. But uh, this is too simple. This is much more complex algorithm. It contains several actions, one at a time. Uh, the first uh, thing to note here, there are no arrows. How come, uh, how come doesn't a flowchart uh, have arrows? Here's why. Uh, arrows are visual noise. They attract attention and they litter the visual scene without giving you any useful information. But you might wonder, but how do I know which icon will execute next? With Draken, the answer is obvious. The next icon is always below. We don't need any arrows because we know that first we start here and then we go here and then we go all the way to the bottom. We don't need to think. This is a very natural direction of things to, to move in, on planets with gravity. If you relax, things fall. So going down is, is natural. There is one element which was present on the previous diagram, but which I, didn't, which I didn't unfortunately mention. And this is the skewer. The skewer is this central line, this metal rod that all the icons sit on. This line, skewer, is central to Dracon 
both logically and graphically. The rule of this cure says that this cure must be vertical and straight. It does not, it must not have any turns or breaks. But uh, you might uh, ask me, do we really need a visual language to, um, to, re to represent a sequence of steps? This is very basic, right? So we don't need any, any, any of this. Yeah, I agree. But before we go to that, uh, let me remind you how lines in Erlang must uh, be ended. Sometimes we need to put a full stop. Sometimes we need to pull a comma. Sometimes it's a semicolon or nothing at all. Well, well Erlang edit, um, Draken editor simplifies this. So the rule is just don't put anything. Except the case when you put several lines in one icon. And here, please put a comma. Right, let's get to some real algorithms. This truncated diamond is called question icon. This icon contains a question that can be answered yes or no. It's an equivalent of if-else statement in procedural languages. And this is very fundamental to algorithms. This means that the computer must make a decision and choose a code path based on some question. And this is so much important that the authors of Dracon decided that it must always be explicit. Erlang is a rich language. We can actually have, uh, we can actually um, hide uh, the branching into um, several uh, language tricks. For example, we can have overloaded versions of a function that would have, uh, s that would use pattern matching to figure out which function to invoke. This is elegant and and, and, and some, some will find it beautiful. But the negative part is that it's a decision that must be made and it is hidden. Hiding important stuff makes not only pain, it makes headache. Draken makes important stuff explicit and visible. I could uh, also mention some small things here. For example, in Draken, words true and false are not allowed here. Only yes and no. Why? Because true and false are not intuitive. They are, of course, they sound scientific, but they are not the first words that a child learns. So please <laughs> use uh, yes and no. Another thing, this uh, diamond is not a full diamond like in uh, flowcharts. It's a beveled diamond to save diagram space. Last but not least, the rule right is worse. So uh, it's, it's easy to remember. Right, uh, right is bad, left is good. In, 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 in uh, Draken, this question icon has two exits. But these two exits are not the same. The exit that leads uh, down is the good one. And the one that goes to the right I is the bad one. This way, Draken allows us to represent the happy path through a diagram. The happy path or as in the Russian IT tradition, they would call it the road of the king must be placed on the skewer. Uh, sometimes the king is not interested in all the dirty details like corner cases or error handling or some complications. 
he only wants to see the most probable or most desirable path through the algorithm and then skip all the rest. Here is the happy part. And here is a less desirable scenario. In this specific diagram, we, we are trying to log on. We check the password first. And uh, if the password is correct, then we proceed with the logon procedure and we attach the session. If not, we deny access to the user. We do not build our websites to deny access, right? We build them to, to give good stuff to people. That's why we consider this uh, code path bad. This is why we put it on the right. Let's um, take a look at a more elaborate example. This is the algorithm of solving a quadratic equation. The first thing that we do about, uh, so how does it work? It accepts the coefficients a, B, C, and returns the roots, if any. The first thing that we must do is to check whether this equation is actually quadratic. If not, we return immediately. We return an error. But the happy part goes like this. First, we calculate the discriminant. Then we compare it to, to zero. If it is a positive number, then we calculate the roots and the, we return them. So that's the, the, the main part. But the discriminant might be it might be equal to zero. Then we have only, only one root and, and we return it. Or even worse, we, the discriminant might be negative. Then we don't have real roots only imaginary. So we return in this impl implementation as an error. So that was related to uh, the rule right is worse. The further to the right, the worse it is. There is another thing which actually I, li I like even more. It, it's the rule common fate. Common fate is a term that comes from psychology but I'm not a psychologist, so I do not understand what it means there. Here, in Draken, common fate means that if we have the same action that we need to perform in several code paths, but we need to do that a little bit differently, then we should put it on the same horizontal. Here is the calculation, here this similar action is the calculation of, of the roots. These uh, horizontal lines, they, they give visual guidance to the reader without littering the diagram with any additional uh, elements like these uh, thick green lines. I just put them to, uh, to explain this. Not all questions can be answered yes and no. Some questions might have several answers. For this scenario, Draken has the macro icon select slash case. One select icon and several case icons. Here is the uh, select icon. Does the rule word um, right is worse, apply here. Yes, it does. But sometimes, especially when we compare to constants like here, they're emotionally similar. They're not much worse or better than others. Then it is advised to introduce order through arranging the case uh, icons uh, from small to, to big, from slow to fast, from high to deep, and you get the idea. The last, the rightmost case icon is empty. It means that uh, all other values. Let me demonstrate this superior algorithm in action. It converts 
a number which is expected to be an int to a, it, to a textual representation. Zero becomes zero, it works. If I take a sufficiently large number, I get its string uh, representation in English. But we don't need to uh, stick to constants. In Erlang, we have pattern matching, which is a very pow powerful tool, which allows us, allows us to break up complex terms and bind uh, variables while making decisions at the same time. Here we have it. Here, the result variable is first compared to the atom OK, and if so, this action is executed. If it's not OK, then we try to disassemble it into this tuple, error and message, and then this message variable gets bound, just like we are used to in, in normal Erlang. Now we are getting to the real stuff. All the diagrams that we have seen so far belong to the type primitive. Primitive is the simplest form of Draken diagrams, and it is excellent. It is an excellent feat for Hello World programs. But unfortunately, the real world is not always Hello World. In the real world, we have complexity, and we have a lot of it. For, for complex things, uh, Draken has this special kind of diagram called uh, silhouette. Silhouette divides a comp complex, complex task into several logical parts. Another use of silhouette is state machines. But let us concentrate on the normal, uh, usual algorithms, uh, the, uh, simple functions. A quick sort, sorry, <laughs> I'm reading from the screen. A silhouette answers the three questions of the king. First, what is the name of the problem we are solving? Second, how many parts does the problem have? And third, what are the names of the problems? After that, the king goes away because he has important things to do. But we developers are left with the details. What is the name of the problem? It's quick sort. It's a sorting algorithm. Okay, great. How many parts does it have? Four. Makes sense. What are the names of the parts? Well, first we analyze the input, what we have, and then we partition the input list. After that, we recursively sort it, and then return what we have. Okay, I got it. Uh, and, and then the king goes away, and, and we stay. And... Uh, we then drill down into each of the branches and we try to and we try to figure them out uh, the top of the branch is the head is the branch header it, it, it contain it contains the name of the branch the bottom of the branch is the address it is the name of the next branch to execute. So here we analyze our input. If the list, which is one of the arguments, if it is empty, then we just go to exit and return it. Because we consider an empty list already sorted. But if for some reason this list contains elements, we need to perform some actual work. So we go to the branch called partition. 
And here we, here we go, we uh, select a pivot, pretty arbitrarily, I would say. Then we build a lambda. And then we just partition the, uh, the input list using this lambda. After that, we recursively, yeah, the, the bottom icon is recurse, which makes us jump to the branch called recurse. And here, we recursively apply this algorithm to the sublists and we combine them together. And in the end, we end up in the, in the same very place, return the, the same thing. Uh, this uh, bundle, uh, uh, Draken and Erlang, they work surprisingly well because Erlang is very smart, I mean the compiler, is very smart at uh, finding variables that are not used, <laughs> that are not initialized, so you, you're not gonna get lost. Erlang will, will, will save you here. Uh, we are, of course, supposed to use OTP, but sometimes, sometimes, we really want this nasty receive keyword, which makes the current process to wait for an incoming message. And we then wait and, and we wait until something comes in. There is a way to, to put it using uh, Drake and Erlang. Just, uh, just type in this receive keyword into the select uh, icon and then we, we can do what, what we are used to, to do with it. We can uh, pa pattern match and we can also uh, set a um, set a timeout after which a delay after which uh, this branch will will fire. I'm, I mean this after keyword. It must be the right most uh, uh, case icon. So th uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, receive statement will make the function exit if we get the stop atom and it will make the function recurse otherwise if it's if if the if the message has a specific structure then we will print it out and if not it will just say unknown uh, we create a new process using uh, this function And we can send messages. If we send uh, just something, it says unknown. If we send, uh, say, message uh, mm, Stockholm. I like Stockholm. W when I gave this talk in Oslo one month ago, only four people showed up. And now I have some more. Yeah, the, uh, the function displays this as Stockholm string, but when we set stop, it exits. So these were, uh, these were simple algorithms. Uh, let's get to state machines. Another use of Draken is state machines. What is, uh, what is so unique about Draken and state machines? Draken, in fact, is, can be seen as a combination of state machine diagrams and decision trees. In other words, it shows, where is it? Yes, here it is. In other words, it shows both the states and the logic behind them. Uh, here we have, uh, we have a state machine that has three states. It actually has four. We, 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 we see this um, final branch, but this is, uh, this is a problem with the Draken editor. It insists that uh, we have uh, this last end uh, branch. State machines, they can some, uh, some state machines can execute forever because this is a specific feature of control algorithms. They execute forever. They, 
never end. Each branch of the silhouette represents a state. And uh, the first icon after the header is a receive uh, uh, statement, which I swear it will not get translated into actual receive keyword. It will generate proper OTP code uh, for, for you. So don't worry, it's just a convention. Then uh, after, after that, we uh, switch based on which message we have received. And in the end, we specify which state will be the next one. And uh, there, is, um, there is some really important value in this, that we have all the state machine on the same visual scene. There is, very, there is no or very little of yo-yo problem when we have to switch between several files to figure out how a thing works. And since we have both the states and the transition logic, we can visualize all the relevant combinations of states and messages and not miss anything out. Yeah, that's the source code of this one. So uh, there could be some... Uh, so uh, th this is a state machine that um, models a code lock. So you come up to, to your office, you type in the code, and then if the code is correct, the, the lock gets unlocked and you get in. Of e even though this uh, sounds pretty simple, in, in the real life th th there could be some, uh, some events that the designer might oversee. For example, if we start typing and then we walk away, what happens then? Here we have the state opening. If instead of a keystroke or a cancel button, we get a timeout, we transfer the machine into the locked state. So we lock uh, the machine instead. So that was uh, state machine business. Last but not least, what do we have here? Since, uh, since I had this uh, visual editing uh, engine, I decided to do one more thing. This is not a uh, uh, Draken, but uh, still it helps at least me. It, it is uh, uh, supervision trees. I find it tedious uh, to edit multiple files, even though these multiple uh, supervisor source code files, even though they represent the same entity, this tree, I need to switch between them, and uh, the syntax is, uh, well, it's, it can be tricky. Even, uh, of course, we are all used to it, so it's not a problem for most of us. So, uh, yeah, I added this uh, little thing. So, uh, that, 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 was, that was it. Uh, are there any questions? How feasible is it to build larger real-life systems in Draken? I, I know that it's used in, in aerospace, but can you give us some sense of how large applications you can build with this? Hmm. This is an, an interesting question. Uh, the large of the first Draken application, I do not, do not know its uh, size, but it's the famous Buran uh, sp uh, spacecraft. It, 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 it is a space shuttle that would uh, lift, lift off, go to space, go to orbit, then do re-entry and airplane type landing all automatically. So that was, uh, yeah, the, the first, uh, it was as complex as hell. This is what the developers say. So they, they, they did it in 1988. And uh, 
uh, our American colleagues, they wanted to reproduce it. It took them 16 years to, to catch up. And yeah, by the way, the Draken editor is written in, in Draken. So, so it works. Uh, yeah, so <coughs> again, I think you're struggling to try and explain something to a bunch of airline folks who don't have any background in Draken. So usually the ID, you've been writing Erlang statements in there, but that's not what most people do. So what other languages do they insert into the Draken thing when they're doing other IDE stuff? Uh, they uh, insert plain English or plain other language. I mean, specifications and uh, descriptions of algorithms. Another major use of this uh, Draken uh, notation is medical algorithms. So they don't typically write then C code or ADA or anything like that. They're just using this as a ID to generate UML. To, uh, it, it's from a design perspective, or, or a, does Draken develop its own source code? I, I do not understand the question. So, sorry. Well, well no. so I, I'm. Well, how do? You, what do you end up compiling your Draken stuff to? Uh, Draken editor uh, outputs source code for Erlang or for C or for C hash or Java or whatever language you choose. Okay, so people would write in there, they would write their C code in the system. So, excuse me if I'm the only, uh, am I doing the right thing or is this, this? Uh, okay, so, yeah. So, so any particular, you'd make a project decision to use one or a couple of different languages as part of the, the, the your project and Draken provides a rigorous, I think we got that, a rigorous schema for how to design the things so that a team of people can work on them. Mm -hmm. But each of the individuals will be writing something that looks like Java code or C code inside of it when they push the compile button. Yes, right. It's uh, it's actual Erlang code inside these no, 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 boxes. No, no. We, we understand that, right? But we're trying to get a sense, I think the people here are trying to get a sense of what people, until you turned up and did the airline code in there, other people have been using the Draken architecture without airline. We're just trying to get a historical perspective of, of what mm -hmm. else they've done uh, and how many people use this and how big the projects are. I, th I think that was the intent yeah. of his yeah. question. Uh, it's, it's not used very widely. Initially, it was used for uh, specifications for this uh, spacecraft control software. But uh, currently, it is uh, it is uh, growing and people start accepting it, but surprisingly in in, in healthcare. Yeah, I, I don't take my, cr we're not trying to be critical, we're just trying to reach understanding and we're missing, I think we're missing a whole bunch of information. But anyway. Thank you very much. I had a specific question that I guess follows up from, from what was going on earlier on. I guess one thing that, that perhaps one needs in a language like this is some form of abstraction or hierarchy. So is there any way that you can, you can abstract over a diagram to make that into a single node in the, or can you name, can you name a, a diagram and, and parameterize it, for example, because those are the things that allow one to build a bigger system in, a, in a, a, w a way that it's not completely flat, but it supports hierarchy. Does, does Dracon give you parameterization, abstraction of any form, or hierarchy, or, will it, or is, it simply just a big, uh, is it simply a big flat diagram? Well, it is a, it is a big flat diagram, right. except for silhouette which contains branches. So that's it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Th there is also a gentleman who, 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 who raised his hand first. Yeah, um, this is you know very, very interesting. And um, I do remember uh, back in the 90s reading about 4GL and all that stuff. And to be 
um, an aspect of that. But um, I just have one uh, quick question. Um, how would you represent recursion using Draken? This is a um, painful question. Uh, let me show you. Uh, recursion is is very important for functional languages. So recursion must uh, jump out at the reader, which is not happening with the, the current IDs, unfortunately. So here is an example of recursion. We have, we have um, some function that uh, recursively what it does, it, it splits the list into tokens. So <laughs> Here's how I just put a comment here. It recurs, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, maybe we should uh, put some color here, something. Yes, the question of uh, the question was if I could uh, take source code and generate a flowchart out, out of it, a dragon chart. Not yet, but uh, many people want it, and this this is uh, this ne needs to be done. This is a bit about a question about syntax. In the diagram about the door, you had open, which was shaded at the top, and the one which was not shaded. There was a bit of Ah, this uh, black triangle. Yeah, that's th that's the bit. It's it's a it's an indication that uh, we are referring uh, to the same uh, to the same uh, branch. So it's a, it's a visual aid. So the opening on the left hand side does not refer to the same opening as the one further there. The open where? So so at the bottom you've got two opening nodes. One yes. is shaded, one is not. Uh, yes, because the left one is a reference to another. Um, so here, th this one yep. points yep. at this branch. Okay. But this points at the same branch. That's why. Ah, okay. Any other question? Oh, well. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much.